Kincaid? Yes, sir. Sign here. What's that? My first, middle, and last name. Toby! Yeah, come here, sir. Tell about Master Kincaid. Master Kincaid ain't up yet. Well, he's been sleeping all the day long. Yes, sir, and he told Joseph and me, don't you wake me before six, or I'll decapitate you. It'll be later than that now. Go on, take this here. All right. Kincaid? Mm -hmm. Time to get up, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, good morning, Toby. Good evening, sir. It's after six o'clock. Oh, what, in the morning? No, sir, in the evening, sir. And here's a telegram letter for yourself, sir. Uh -huh. Bad news, Moss Kincaid? For somebody else, maybe, but not for me. I'm glad. What you all gonna have for your breakfast this evening? Steak, rare, nice and thick. Yes. Some fried eggplant, mashed potatoes, and green peas. Yes, sir. And you tell Josie I want a basket full of her hot rolls and butter and a pot of coffee. And a nice big heaping cut of apple pies? With cheese. Now you tell Blackie I want to see him right away. Yes, sir. <coughs> Breakfast, Moss Kincaid. Good evening, Blackie. Good evening, boss. What was the take last night? Plenty. Roulette tables, $2,003. Blackjack, $1,640. Faro, we lose. Who is dealing? Me. No. Oh. Shamanda Fair, $3,055. Dice games, $900 even. And, and this. Who was it? Stranger, never saw him before. Ah. Yes, sir, a mighty sweet evening. On the poker table? Boss, you were superb. Winning, 11,400. And we'll do better tonight. Not tonight, Blackie. What's the matter? I'm invited to a party at the home of Stephen Adams. You mean you're going out? Well, this is a special kind of party, Blackie. It's for charity. Charity begins at home. How about a bite? I ain't got no appetite now. Look here, boss. It ain't for me to tell you what to do. But we're fixed up so nice here. We've got one of the best layouts in the country. We have done rather well, haven't we? That's why I keep thinking that there's only one way we can lose now. And that is to let you keep on dealing. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. That if we start mixing business with pleasure. Don't let it bother you, Blackie. A gambler's business is his only pleasure. That's all I wanted to know, boss. You gonna eat all that steak? No. Mm. Pity to waste it. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Brown. Mr. and Mrs. Howard McIntyre. Mrs. Clarence Daly. Mr. and Mrs. George Baxter. Mr. and Mrs. Isaac Jacob. Mr. and Mrs. Antonio Campagna. Mr. and Mrs. Henri de Toussaint. Mr. and Mrs. Hector Bailey. Miss Millicent Bailey. There's Mr. Forsyth. Come, Millicent. I, uh, I want to talk to Steve. I'll see you in a minute. Don't you drink too much. I didn't know there was too much. Come, dear. My, how pretty you look, Millicent. Thank you. How nice of you to come, Harriet. Good evening, Laura. How's Gerald? Since he became associated with Coralie's father, I hardly ever see him. Where is Coralie? Why isn't she receiving? Oh, I'm helping out. 
so she can be free to keep an eye on things. Yes, meaning to keep an eye on all the eligible men. Mr. Gerald Forsythe. Good evening, Mr. Adams. Good evening, Gerald. <laughs> well, how are you, Mr. Bailey? Hello, Gerald. How do you like the crowd? Whenever Coralie undertakes anything, there's only one at we were betting that she couldn't stick these stiff shirts, get the dollars and take it to make a bite. <laughs> Champagne, sir? Surely. That'll be fifteen dollars, sir. Huh? Five dollars each. Miss Corley said that there were to be no exceptions, sir. Well, my own daughter in my own house makes me pay for my own liquor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Just a minute. One more paid for there. Gentlemen, to an amazing girl. Uh, by the way, where is she? From five to one, she's surrounded by a group of admiring men. <laughs> yes, sir, it's getting so an engagement ring is no protection at all to a fellow these days. Excuse me, please. Well, we didn't need any protection when we were young. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for you. You must dance first with your mother. It's the latest Strauss waltz. Why, of course, Mother. It's a pleasure. Don't look so grim about it. And give me ten dollars. Ten dollars? What is this? A hold-up? <laughs> come. It's for charity. All right. Excuse us. She's on your mind all the time, isn't she? Not when I'm dancing with anybody as attractive as you are, Mother. Don't dissemble, Gerald. I know that look in a man's eye. Your father had it up till the day he died. Heaven rest his soul. Never for me. Mother. You've inherited my stupid fidelity. One of my few weaknesses. Now don't try to be cynical, Mother, because you don't fool me for a minute. Not cynical, just realistic. I won't talk to you any further. Go and rescue her. How about giving me my ten dollars back? I've been cheated. Oh! Impudent! <laughs> I'll stay. Out. Cards, gentlemen? Two, please. Three, please. And one for the Fifty dollars. And I'll raise you. What have you? I'm afraid your three of a kind aren't quite enough, Dr. Hartley. All black. <laughs> I was sure I had her that time. Thought she was bluffing. Hello, you remember me? Oh, yes. Mr. Gerald Forsythe, I believe. My fiance. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I wanted to make some more money for the fun. Well, deal me out this time, yes. gentlemen. I'll be back later. All right. First woman I ever saw that could play poker like a man. Better than any man at this table. <laughs> I suppose you think I'm terrible. Yes, I do. I think you're terribly sweet and lovely. But I still don't like the idea of you gambling with a lot of men. Oh, then I won't play anymore. Well, it's fine. Ten dollars, please. Hey, I has a hundred. You got a full program. Thank you very much. I don't question. <laughs> Looks to me as though Kincaid wasn't gonna show up. He owe me a thousand dollars. Not yet, I know. I bet you that I'd invite him and then he'd be here by ten o'clock. Still got five minutes and fourteen seconds. Still think he'll come, eh? Well, Kincaid never ducked the promise or an obligation in his life. I still think you're stuck. <laughs> Does it make any difference if I gamble with a lot of ladies? The ladies don't gamble. Oh, so that's it. Now I'm not a lady. Now look, Charlie, don't try to get me involved any more of your petty little quarrels. I'm only trying to protect you, that's all. Any man would do the same thing. This constantly being protected is so dumb. Oh, look! <laughs> look at Aunt Harriet. Ten to one, she begins to hiccup from that last glass within a minute. There you go again, Carly. That's just what I mean. But why not, darling? Either she does or she doesn't. It's a good bet. Five dollars against fifty. 
You'd bet on anything, wouldn't you? Well, of course. That's what makes life interesting. Guessing what's going to happen and backing your judgment and skill. Look at Father. His whole life's a gamble and he always wins. I wouldn't be too sure about that. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. You were going to tell me something? I never discussed my employer's business. Not even with his daughter? Well, I was just going to say that uh, your father's luck is traditional, but... Oh, look, Gerald. <laughs> I would have won. Good evening. Oh, good evening. I'm James Kincaid. Good evening. James Kincaid. Good evening. How do you do? Sure, your name is on the list of invited guests. But uh, Mrs. Carter and I are just helping out at the desk here, and we... You were invited. Yes, I was. A friend of Mr. Adams. Yes. Oh, heck. Heck. <coughs> Good evening, Kincaid. Good evening. We've been expecting you. Your coming here cost me a thousand dollars. Haven't I taught you gentlemen yet the evils of gambling? Well, it looks like heck and I'll have to have a little more teaching. <laughs> Come along. Fifty dollars, please. No, it's all right. I'll give you the check. Don't bother. Five hundred dollars? <laughs> well, heck, let's see the color of your money. It was worth it just to see the expression on Mrs. Forsyth's face. <laughs> Must buy a poster. It's for charity. Thank you very much. I'm a little bit prejudiced. <laughs> That's his daughter. Oh. And furthermore, she expects you to win a lot of money for her charity fund tonight. That's why I'm here. Who is that with fun? I have the slightest idea. Ooh, it's warm, isn't it? Yes, it is. I guess you a cold drink. Excuse me, I'll be right back. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not intruding. Well, what was it, honey? Why, oh, it can wait. I want you to meet Mr. Kincaid, the gentleman I drafted in your behalf. Oh, yes. I think it's wonderful of you to accept Mr. Kincaid. Pleasure to be of service, Miss Adams. Here's a drink, Carly. Oh, Mr. Kincaid, this is Mr. Forsyth, my fiance. How do you do? How do you do? Looks like a nice party. Yes, and there are lots of pretty girls. Would you care to dance? I'd like to very much, Miss Adams. Do you mind? Well, I do, but I guess it won't do me any good. Don't worry, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> this will cost you ten dollars. Ten dollars? Is that too much? Yeah. Oh, a hundred dollars. I'm sorry, I haven't changed. I don't expect any. For charity, isn't it? Oh, thank you. <laughs> How about a drink, Kincaid? Thanks. How much is that? Five dollars. Oh, don't let it take you. This is already paid for. <laughs> Gerald, Mr. Kincaid won't know that if you don't tell him. Let me hold it for you while you dance. Here, I'll make some arrangements for it. It's already paid for, him. So gambling is your occupation? Yes, we like to call it profession. Tell me, what is your gambling house like? See, no, oh, nothing much. Just a lot of rooms and tables and men and smoke. Don't pretend to be so indifferent. I bet it's fascinating. Filled with excitement and honest emotions instead of a lot of silly conventions and prejudices. <laughs> Your father's daughter, eh? <laughs> so they say. Next time we pass her, I bet a hundred dollars she's hiccuping. I think you're taking an unfair advantage, but it's a bet. Thank you. 
irresistible. My asthma. Well, I'm afraid I've been bamboozled. Where's the gambler? In the conservatory there. Roulette? Thank you. Now, poker. Oh, that's my game. Mine, too. What's more, I've always wanted to play against a professional. Well, if that's a challenge, Miss Adams, I'm at your service. Oh, that's uh, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had a good hand on it. I certainly could use a little better luck. What about a fresh deck? Have you one with you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, I'll continue to use yours. <laughs> well, you can't win all the time. Just luck, Miss Adams. Why don't you try a fresh deck? <laughs> <laughs> That's a silly superstition. I'll take my chances with these. Your luck can't last forever. How much is yours now? About four months allowed. Gerald, you and Corley have been engaged now about six months. What are you waiting for? Well, every time we get about all set, we run into some little squabble. Come on in here. I want to talk to you. I've been a gambler all my life. A gambler is a man with a fever in his blood. When that fever runs high, everything else is forgotten. I think I know what you're getting at. You watch that poker game in there? Yes, sir. Well, I saw enough to make me realize Coralie is so much of me and so little of her mother. It's frightening. I know what you mean. Mrs. Adams was a wonderful woman. She went through all those hard years in the West, devoted and non-complaining. And when the good times came along and Coralie was born, she died. That's why I brought Coralie East. I wanted her to have all of the things her mother missed and should have had. Well, if it's up to me, I'll do all I can. It is up to you, son. You see, I'm not getting any younger. With you, Coralie will not only have wealth, but the respect and dignity of a fine old family. You're the solid, reliable type. And you represent the kind of security I've always wanted for my girl. Well, thanks very much. Well, getting late. Time that party was broken up. But take my advice, son. Marry her just as soon as you can. You're right, and that's just what I'm going to do. Good luck. Give up, Mr. Kincaid. I bow to my superior. Spoken like a true Adam. Charlie, I'm afraid you're not being a very good hostess. All your guests will leave. Oh, in that case, I should be going myself. Miss Adams, I'd like you to accept these as my contribution to your charity fund. You're very generous, Mr. Kincaid. But I want to see your father before I go. Yes, indeed. Told me you weren't going to gamble anymore. Don't argue, Gerald. There isn't any argument, Curly. <laughs> you and I are getting married tonight. Tonight? What's come over you? Well, we've been engaged about six months now. I don't see the sense of waiting any longer. Gerald, have you been drinking? Don't be evasive. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> I don't see anything so funny about it. Curly, wait a minute. We're going to settle this right now. You said I was a poor hostess. Let me go. I must. I'm not going to let you go till you tell Please, me. Gerald. Say goodnight to me here. I want to see my guests to the door.
I was just leaving, Miss Adams. I'm the last one to be swept out, as usual. And you're sweeping out a lot of my vanity with you. Oh, don't say that. The gambler's not supposed to have a conscience. Does that mean you won't give me the chance for revenge? I'm afraid your father will have to take over the family burdens on that score, dear. <laughs> you see, it is a man's world. Well, perhaps one day it will change. Who knows? Good night. Good night. Good night, dear. Good night, Father. Oh, please tell Gerald not to wait. I'm going up to bed. Good night. just told me you was back. What's the matter? Ain't you going downstairs? No. Ain't you feeling right? I never felt better in my life. But business is terrific. We've got a full house. Good. Blackie, I want you to go out and order the most beautiful red roses you can buy. Roses? You mean flowers? Yep. Two dozen of them with nice long stems to be sent daily to Miss Coralie Adams. In my language, that can only mean one thing. Yeah. You guessed it. I knew this would happen. I knew it. And to you, too. Didn't you tell me? Blackie, don't let it bother you. A gambler's business is his only pleasure. Yeah. Well, I did say that, didn't I? Yeah, how long ago? How long ago? Why, well, only tonight. Only tonight. Does she feel the same way about you? I don't know. She's engaged to somebody else at the moment. Nice fellow. Lots of money, social position, and all that sort of thing. Well, that's a relief. What do you mean? Well, there's a chance she might marry that other guy. Come in. Excuse me, Moss Kenke, but Mr. Adams is downstairs. He's kind of anxious to see you. Tell him I'll be right down. Yes, sir. Red roses. Uncle Hector. I didn't want to worry you, Corley, but I was wondering if you happen to know where your father is. No, I don't. Edward says he went out sometime after the party last night and left word not to wait up for him. You don't suppose that... Now, don't you go supposing things. If I know Steve, he got stuck in a poker game somewhere and forgot to come home. I wonder... Well, when he comes in, I wish you'd tell him to get in touch with me right away, will you? Awful nice party you had last night. We had a wonderful time. Thank you, Uncle Hector. Word came there was panic on the Viennese exchange. Europe no longer buying American bonds while there was an absolute riot on the floor of the exchange. So that's why Uncle Hector was so upset. 
he hadn't put up that hundred thousand dollars himself and gotten the if we could only locate your father i'd make him put up the stock and the deed to that gambler's like silver mine i think he keeps them in that cabinet over there i'll see if the key's in here Unpaid notes. Your father didn't want you to know about his financial troubles. Oh, what am I, a child? Why couldn't he have told me? Why have me go on living in all this luxury while he made silly sacrifices for me? Not exactly, because once that mine gets on big production again, well, all your father's obligations will mean absolutely nothing. looking for you. The bottom dropped out of the stock market this morning. And unless we can pledge the deed to the gambler's luck, we're wiped out. It's no use. The cooking company will cover us if we can put up that mine deed. I no longer own the mine. I lost it. Lost it gambling. Don't worry, Steve. After all, it isn't as if you were the only one. Everybody is in the same boat. The panic gets us all. Now just take it easy. And when the banks are open again, you'll be as right as rain and ready to fight like a lion. I've been warning him about that heart of his for over five years. He always laughed and treated it as a joke. But the question is, if this hasn't been one shot too many. I'll be back, my child, in a few hours. Pretty dull, big cat. 
This ain't the first time I lost. It won't be the last. I'll dig another stake right here in New York. One thing I don't want you never to forget from me. No matter how the cards run, don't never be afraid to face life. Face it. Win, lose, or draw. No matter how the cards run. I sold the merchandise, not stocks and bonds, merchandise. We aren't investors, and I ain't no Wall Street broker. <laughs> you men, worrying over a few little household bills. What about our clients? Widows, old folks, who entrusted their life savings with us. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. I'll put it in the hands of an attorney. That's just what I intend doing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, gentlemen. Listen to me. I've known Steve Adams for 30 years. I mind with him out west. I've seen him stone broken. I've seen him with millions. And I tell you, as long as he lives, he'll make good. I want my money now. I've waited long enough. My account is 10 months old. Why, well, mine's over a year. Why well, doesn't he want to pay us? Gentlemen. My father, Stephen Adams, is dead. Whatever you believe or whatever you may think, I assure you, now that he's gone, it shall be my solemn duty to pay you back every single penny. Certainly was a great shock. Why, only the night before, he was right here, gambling with me. Oh, then he lost his silver mine to you, huh? Yeah. Well, that's what I came here to find out. Well, he's dying of bankrupt lie. I had no idea that he was skating on such thin ice. Yes, it came as a surprise to a lot of people. Mm, I wish I had known. I suppose this is going to make things rather tough on his daughter. It leaves Carly practically penniless. Is there anything I can do? No, no, I'm in a position to take care of her as far as that goes. But, uh... There is something. What is it? Sell me the gambler's luck. Well, how could that help Miss Adams? Well, you see, her father's silver mine means a great deal to her. Although, actually, it doesn't work very much. These reports show diminishing returns for the last ten years. Then why are you so anxious to buy it? Sentimental reasons. It would give Carly a feeling of independence and uh, a little income of her own. Well, how much are you prepared to pay for it? Oh, about $25,000. Mm. It's a lot of money for sentiment. Maybe not. You see, I want to give it to Carly for our wedding present. We'd set the date for the 15th of next month. Well, I'm sorry, but the gambler's luck is not for sale. Why not? For personal reasons. Not even for uh, $50,000? Not for fifty, seventy-five, or a hundred and seventy-five. Maybe you'll change your mind. Not a chance. What? I'd be very happy to give this to Miss Adams for a wedding present. With my compliments. Are you serious? Yes. Well, I must say that's very sporting of it. Although I'd still rather buy it. It's for Miss Adams, not for you. Well, I'll see that my lawyer has this legally transferred. In Miss Adams' name? Naturally. It's a wedding present to her, isn't it? And for Carly's sake, I want to thank you. Not at all. Congratulations and good luck. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Look, boss. A button here. The floor says we won every day for ordering them roses. No, cancel the order. What? Pay off the dealers in the help. Give them a month's extra salary. We're closing shop. Hey, have you gone crazy? Do what I tell you. Oh, and we were just getting used to this climate. Well, we need a change of climate. Mm, I can't blame you much. With all the banks closed and brokers jumping right and left out of windows. Nothing left in this town but a few pikers and a lot of small fry. Why hang around? I know just how you feel, boss. Once I had a girl. Will you shut up and start packing? Goodness gracious, child. How in thunderations we'd want to close this one. Only a few more things, Ruby. More yet? My, my. May I come in? Edwards told me. Carly, what in heaven's name? I was going to write to you, Gerald. Explain. You were running away. Oh, please try to understand. You're acting like a stupid, frightened little schoolgirl. No, he did. Just like a man. Never mind, Ruby. You go on and get back. Yes. I know what you've been through, darling. But we can postpone the wedding a month or two. It'll take more than a month. More than a year. So you're still set on paying off your father's obligations? Well, then, why can't I help you? You can, but not right now. And please, Gerald, promise me you won't try to find me. Why, the whole thing's ridiculous. Oh, please, darling, it's the only way. You might meet someone else, and under the circumstances, it wouldn't be quite fair. Now, you stop acting like a silly little fool and put that ring back on. All right, darling, but only on condition that should you ever change your mind or tire of waiting. Well, is we going or is we ain't? Yes, Ruby. place we're going to. San Francisco. His father always used to say, let's meet the future face to face, win, lose, or draw. Poor darling. His whole life was ruined by gambling. Yet when you stop to think of it, every decision we make, every move, every plan, every guess, right or wrong, good or bad, success or failure, it's all a gamble. That's it, Ruby. Gambling. Miss Adams, $10,800. Send that. To the same party? Yes, Mr. Gerald Forsythe, you have his New York address. 
Yes, sir. Mr. Gerald Forsythe. Yes. Gerald, I thought you'd gone. Good morning, Mother. You haven't touched your breakfast. No, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> That's very considerate of you, Gerald. Mother. I uh, need your help. Again? Just as a loan. I'll be able to pay the whole thing back very soon now. That mysterious enterprise of yours is proving to be a costly one. Just this one time. You promised that before. I know. But I'm in a desperate squeeze. Gerald, you really do sound troubled. I am. And unless I can get my hands on $30,000 right away... But that's absurd. Where can I get any such sum of money? How much could you let me have? But what do you want it for and why so suddenly? Now don't ask so many questions. I simply got to have it, that's all. But $30,000, I think I'm entitled to know what... All right then, Mother, I'll tell you. Years ago, I got hold of a mine. And to keep the thing going, well, I've been using the money that Carly Adams sent me to pay off her father's creditors. Gerald, how could you? I tried to keep it from you, but some of the creditors are getting suspicious. And unless I But can... that was dishonest. That's why you better let me have the money. Unless you want everybody to know. I don't understand you. I can't believe that you're threatening me like this. It's too late to argue. What's come over you, son? Are you going to let me have it or not? I'm sure you're old enough to know what you've done. Now, Mother, I don't want to listen to your preaching. You've gotten yourself into this difficulty. You will have to get yourself out. You mean you'd rather see me go to jail? Gerald, I shan't give you one single penny. Hobson. Hobson. Yes, Mr. Forsyth. Good morning. Is this all the correspondence? Uh, no, these just came, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Carson is waiting outside. I'll show him right in. Yes, sir. Come in, sit down. Thank you. Now, Carson, when I hired you as superintendent of the gambler's luck, I thought you knew your business. Why, well, I do, sir. Then but... would you please mind telling me why that mine doesn't show more profit than it does? Well, sir, that's the mining business for you, Mr. Forsyth. You've got the vein and then you lose it. Costs a lot of money to keep going until you hit it again. Yeah, I understand all that. But all I want to know is how long before we are going to hit it again. You've got the new geological survey report. Yours is one of the richest holdings in the West. It's just a matter of time. Well, it better be soon. Because ever since I bought that hole in the ground, I've sunk every dollar I could get into it. Now, you've got to cut expenses, do you understand? Cut them to the bone. My key, please. Yes, sir. Did the Flora send those roses I ordered? Yes, sir. Two dozen to the Silver Queen. Thank you. Come on. If you really want to gamble for big money, why don't you go up to the Silver Queen? At $100 a chip, he'd last about two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Beat that. Is it true? Judge, that ex-president Grant will be here to start the ceremony. Oh, it certainly is, eh, Colonel? Yes, Governor Stanford's committee expects the Grant party to sail into the bay sometime this evening. Well, I must be going, gentlemen. What, so soon? How about a drink first? No, I'm sorry. I have an appointment with a most charming young lady. And I shouldn't like to lose my place at our table. Silver Queen? Oh, yes. The Silver Queen. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, sir. Good night. Well, I must be leaving. Going my way, Thomas. Oh, I know, Judge. I just remembered I have an appointment, too. A most important appointment. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh. 
What are you doing? Yes, sir. Give me San Francisco every time. I like the nightlife and I like the climate. Well, where have I heard that before? New York, Baltimore, New Orleans, Denver, and Cripple Creek. Mm -mm, not that one. I'll give you Cripple Creek. So you think you're going to like San Francisco with all its fog, eh? Boss, right now I'd like any place where you don't have to ride no trains or no boats or no stagecoaches or mules or horses. Well, with the exposition, the government priming the pumps with a lot of loose money, might be here for a long time. Who knows? Stay where the picking's good is what I say. What's on the program tonight, boss? I'll do a little visiting. A friend? No, I should more aptly say a business rival. The lady that's known as the Silver Queen. <laughs> but for your sake, I hope she ain't young and good looking. I'll tell you all about it when I get back. Well, just remember those red roses with the long stems. Good evening, Mr. Dowling. Good evening, Jacques. This way, please. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And what is Monsieur's pleasure this evening? What have you to offer? Oh, Monsieur might amuse himself at roulette. No, thanks. Chemin de fer, perhaps. A blackjack? Ah, Paro is full of surprises. That's not the kind of surprises I'm looking for. <laughs> Hello, Thomas. I thought you told me you had an appointment. This is it, John. <laughs> 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 what about that big table over there? For care, monsieur. That's for me. Oh, oh, but monsieur, that table, it is impossible. Impossible? Why? Well, it is, as you say, only by special appointment. Uh, but there is another poker table there. No, no, no. I prefer to play at this one. But monsieur can see that there are no places. Well, <clears throat> an extra bill, an extra chair. Oh, what can be done, monsieur? We shall see. Uh, wait here, please. Very beautiful this evening. Thank you. As usual. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Senator Fields. We're ready. Colonel, judge, the usual stakes, gentlemen. And the usual stakes. Won't you sit down, please? Thank you. Thank you. King Cage, the name. Kincaid, I'm so happy to see you. And I'm happy to see you, too. Please forgive me, gentlemen, but Mr. Kincaid and I are old friends. As a matter of fact, we have a little supper engagement. Oh, why, yes. Uh, Andre, would you take charge of the table this evening? It's okay, Norman, will you? Please excuse me, but I'm sure you will understand. Certainly, but it'll be a great disappointment. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. What I don't understand is how a social figure, a conservative gentleman such as Gerald, uh, uh, what was his name? Gerald Forsythe? Oh, yes, Forsythe. Would allow his wife to follow the career of gambling. I'm not Gerald Forsythe's wife. You're not? No. But you were engaged. The wedding date was all set. Well, I haven't seen Gerald in years. In years? No. Strange that you should come here tonight. Why? Because only this afternoon I sent Gerald the last money, paying off in full all of father's creditors. You mean to say you did that all yourself, through gambling? That's the only talent I have. That's why I never married Gerald. That's why I never married anyone. 
Well, let's not talk about me. Tell me something about yourself. Oh, there isn't very much of interest to tell. We've done a lot of traveling. Are you married? Oh, no. I mean my business associate and I. <laughs> oh, forgive these silly questions. But I feel so lightheaded and gay for the first time in years. So do I. Let's celebrate, shall we? Yes, let's. I won't be a moment. Is that music they're playing? Why, of course. It's my favorite waltz. Mine? You know, that's the waltz that played the very first night we met. That's right. It reminds me, what are you doing tomorrow? Why? How would you like to go to the exposition? I'd love it. And then all day Thursday, we'll have a picnic on the sand dunes of the Golden Gate Park. A picnic? I haven't been on a picnic since I was a child. Friday, we'll go to the opening of the new Tivoli Opera House. They're doing Gilbert and Sullivan's Pinafore. Not that. I enjoyed the play tremendously. It was fun, wasn't it? Thanks for a wonderful evening. And the most wonderful week. The days, the nights, and the weeks will grow more wonderful as time goes on. You're very, very nice, Jim Kinky. Hallelujah. Lucio is a powerful potion. And when a handsome rascal like Martha Kincaid comes along... Yes, ma'am. Did he ask you to marry him, honey? He hasn't yet, but he will. And old Ruby, won't it be wonderful to leave all this? But honey, didn't you say he was a gambler, too? <sighs> Good evening, sir. Well, the theater seat's all right. Perfect, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show. Tremendously. Good night. Good night, sir. Hello there, Mr. Kincaid. Remember me? Bailey. Hector Bailey. Hector Bailey? Gosh, I'm glad to see you. How are you? How are things? Ah, oh, never better. Never better. <laughs> Out west with your family? No, I'm alone. I'm all alone. Well, how about a drink in the bar? No, no, sir. Look, I'm starved. Come on up and have a bite with me. Well, I might have a cup of coffee with you. Fine. Blackie will order some coffee. We'll have a couple of steaks, nice and rare. And we'll talk about old times. I hope those steaks are medium well done, Blackie. You ordered them rare, didn't you? I did not. That's funny. I could have bet. I All right, I'll bet you. 500 I ordered a medium well done. Well, look, I have... No, you didn't, boss. You said rare. Well, that settles it. You always eat them rare. <clears throat> Haven't you forgotten something? What? Cigars. Go out and get the best you can buy. Sure I will, but will you tell him I ain't a valet? You're not a poker player either. Well, how did I know that bellboy had two deuces? Mr. Kincaid, I can't tell you. No, it's all yours. You won it fair and square. Why, the night of the Adams party, you lost a thousand dollars on me. That doesn't even square it. Adams party. That was a long time ago. That's right. Well, stakes are getting cold. You're a gambler, Mr. Bailey. You know the cards kind of run against you all the time. Why, before you know it, you'll be right up on top again. I'm not so sure. Of course, if Steve Adams is alive, he'd have seen it. All his creditors got something out of the wreck. You mean to say you didn't get anything? No, not a thing. Well, there must be some mistake. 
I don't want you to think I'm a sore loser or a poor sport. It's just that when you try to make a comeback, sometimes it seems like you haven't got any friends. And you have got friends, Mr. Bailey, and Carly Adams was one of them. In fact, she's right here in San Francisco. Carly Adams here? Up on Knob Hill, only. Naturally, you wouldn't realize it. She's known here as the Silver Queen. <laughs> Silver Queen, eh? Say, whatever became of that mine? I don't know. I suppose it went down to the rest of the wreckage. Hmm. Certainly would be interesting to know exactly what did happen to it. Uh, well, I better be going. You sure and see Carly. I know that she'll set you right. You really think so? I'm positive. And Mr. Bailey, Blackie and I are leaving for Nevada City in the morning, and while I'm there, I'll find out what I can for you about the canvas luck. Incidentally, these rooms are paid for. Why don't you stay here till we come back? Oh, no, no. I, I wouldn't want to impose. <laughs> I'm fixed up all right. Would you be kind enough to give me Coralie's address? I'd be glad to. And as long as you're going to see her, I wish you'd deliver a note for me. Thanks for everything, Mr. Kincaid. That's well, nothing, and I'll see you when I get back. Yeah, good night. Good night. Blackie! Come on, hurry up and start packing. We're leaving. Well, listen, boss. We was just getting accustomed to the climate and the fog. A little business deal I had a while back that needs fixing. And I'm just getting used to this nightline. Here now, honey child, you gotta stop that right this minute. You can't be carrying on now when it's time for you to be getting down to the casino. He was so considerate, so attentive. Why couldn't he have sent some word, some message? Honey, you was asking questions that no female can answer. Don't you fret on baby lamb. Cause there ain't a man would breathe the breath of life that's worth it. Let me fix you up a bit. Besides, you gotta remember, you is a queen. Come in. Mademoiselle, there is a message. You are wanted at the hospital immediately. A friend. Oh, Ruby, help me get dressed. I'll get the carriage. Wait here, please. I'm 
sorry, monsieur. Madame will not speak to newspaper reporters. But you don't seem to understand. I'm not a newspaper reporter. But she will see no one, nobody, absolutely. We are closed. Just the same, take this card up to her. I'm pretty sure she'll see me, all right? Cards, messages, she won't even look upon them. Just do as I say. I've come all the way from New York to see her. Why, Mr. Forsythe, heaven be praised. Miss Carly, she's going to be powerful glad to see you. I'll tell her you is here. Come right on up. Thank you very much, Ruby. Miss Carly? Oh, Miss Carly. What is it, Ruby? Honey, I got some good news. What's happened? There's someone here to see you. Someone you're going to be mighty happy to see. Yes, ma'am. Oh, is he really here? The gentleman himself. Carly, darling. Well, I must say, you don't seem the least bit happy to see me. I kept my promise. I didn't try to find you, though. I've been so upset. Something terrible happened to Uncle Hector. Yes, I read about him. It's too bad. Gerald, he said something about not being paid off, as though I'd overlooked him. Now don't be silly. He's the very first one I did pay. Are you sure? Positive. Now, what do you think he did with the money? He lost it gambling, every dollar. Oh, poor dollar. He kept talking about a new stake. Yeah, it's the same old story. Once a prospector, always a pro... And speaking of prospecting, I've got a little wedding present for you. I bought it some time ago. You bought what for me? The gambler's luck. Father's mine? Mm -hmm. Who did you buy it from? Well, you remember the day your father came home and said he lost it gambling? The new owner turned out to be Kincaid. Kincaid? Kincaid? Yes. The professional gambler that came to your house the night of the charity ball. Yes, I remember. I must say he took advantage of the situation to drive a hard, close bargain, but it was worth it. After all, darling, sentiment's worth something, too. And after we're married... You say father lost the mine to Kincaid, and you bought it from him. That's right. But why worry about Kincaid? I've done everything you asked me. I've more than lived up to my share of the bargain. And I know you live up to yours, too. So we're not going to wait any longer. We're going to be married right away. say you bought the mine for sentimental reasons. That's right. Then you will understand why I asked this. I was born in Nevada City, and that's where Father discovered the mine. That's where I want to get married. Well, if that's what you want, Nevada City it is. What's the matter, Blackie? Why did we ever have to leave San Francisco to come to a climate like this? Go on, drag yourself over to the depot and see what you can find out. All right. Good boy. There's my two bits. Thanks, Doc, and I'm going to give you a chance to win it back. Double or nothing? Not today, son. There's an infant about to make an entrance into this veil of joy and sorrow. And I'm to do the ushering. Coming my way? Glad to. How are you, Doc? How are you? Dan Carson, the mine superintendent. Who's that with him? The sheriff, thickest thieves. Doctor, I suppose you've been in Nevada City so long that you know just about everyone who's come and gone. Well, seeing as how I brought many of them into the world, and have seen a lot of them die. Some grow rich overnight, and broke just as fast. Like the mines around here, prosper, and then the vein runs out. That's what I was just thinking. Now, you, you take the gambler's luck, for instance. They're a perfect example. 
made Stephen Adams a millionaire. Then he lost it. Who has it now? A, a new party. The name is... Let's see. I must be getting old. Thanks for life. I only met him the past week. And the names escaped me. It's Kenick. No, no. It's something like Foster. Could it be Forsythe? Forsythe. That's the name. Same time tomorrow. Well, just one more thing, Doctor. Uh, where did you say this, uh, this Forsythe could be found? I, I didn't say. You know Brett, the editor of the newspaper down the street? Yes. You talk to him. He can tell you a lot. Goodbye. It's a dangerous assignment. It can take a bit of cunning. But you as a stranger will be able to nosy around places where I couldn't go. Sit down. Oh, thanks. Well, don't worry about that. What's the story you want me to get? Well, if what I suspect is true, we'll expose the greatest piece of deception in years. Well, sounds very interesting. Go ahead. There's been quite a bit of undercover work around that mine. I'm positive the gambler's luck has struck a new vein. What makes you so sure? Well, what brought Forsyth to Nevada City? Why all the secret conferences with Carson and the sheriff? Oh, I get it. They're trying to keep the news from the people, huh? Exactly. That's why Forsyth has gone to buy up all the available stock on the San Francisco Exchange. Did you say that Forsyth had gone to San Francisco? That's right. Rocked in the cradle of the deep. Rocked in the cradle of the deep. Sure, you get the right room? Yeah. Rocked in the cradle of the deep. Oh, boy. Oh. Where's your partner? You know, a fella got no privacy around here? Hey, hand me that other soap, will you? Now the robe. Who do you think we are, your servants? You'll do. What do you want? Ouch! Hey, I got soap in my hand. Hand me that towel, quick. My gosh, in this climate, a fella's got to take a bath every week. Well, aren't you getting high tone, Blackie? Having two such illustrious citizens playing valor to you. Well, to what do we owe the pleasure of this visit, gentlemen? Sheriff and I ain't here to entertain or play valor. Oh, my mistake. You'd be making a bigger mistake by staying on here in Nevada City. Oh, I like it here. We like the climate, don't we, Blackie? You betcha. Suits me fine. May not be too healthy for you. Never felt better in my life. If you're a smart young fellow, you'll listen to Mr. Carson. Why are you so anxious to get rid of me? We're telling you for your own good. Now stay off private property or I'll have to arrest you. Oh, you mean you want me to stay off the gambler's luck, is that it? Yeah, exactly. Well, I never realized that property was so valuable. Could it be that you gentlemen are trying to hide something? <laughs> We're not trying to hide nothing. What are you talking about? I'm warning you, the next time you're seen near those premises, you'll be shot for trespassing. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the warning. Come on, Sheriff. Cute little fellas, ain't they? Yeah. Well, ain't nothing like a good old hot bath to get that mine ore out of your ears. Come on, start packing. Oh, boss, again? Yeah, we're going to San Francisco. What? To go back from this sunshine to that fog? Well, the fog is clear. You ain't letting them fellas run you away. Blackie, you know better than that. But I found some very interesting information. Yeah? Yeah, we've got to get to San Francisco and stop a certain party before it's too late. Now, come on, get with it. Sure. Come to that room. Get it yourself. How do you do? How do you do? Dear, you and Ruby better go upstairs. Arrangements have already been made. Uh, Miss Adams, sweet? Yes, thanks. Come on, honey, I think you'd better get some rest. Yes, it's a very good idea. Because you've had a long, hard trip. And I've got some business to discuss, so uh, I'll see you at dinner.
Say, uh, will you get a message to Dan Carson? I'm back. Well, I'm sorry, sir. He just left. Oh, say, there's a letter here for you. Hey, thank you. Sure. You make sure that baggage gets here right quick from the depot now. Yes, ma'am. Message over to Carson. Tell him to come up to my room right away. Yes. Forsyth. Well, this is a surprise. Just think, I might have missed you. What are you doing in Nevada City? I came all the way up here just to have a little chat with you. Uh huh. Well, it's very nice of you. Remember the last time we met? You promised to give Carly my present of the gambler's luck. It was a wedding present, so I thought I'd just keep it till after we got married. When was that? As a matter of fact, that's why Carly and I are here now. She wants to get married in Nevada City. Does she know you didn't pay Hector Baylor the money she sent you? Why don't you mind your own business? Does she know you used his and other creditors' money to develop the mine? You seem to know an awful lot about things that don't concern you. Carly doesn't realize as I do. The only reason you're marrying her is to protect yourself from fraud and theft. Just a minute, I'm getting sick and tired of these insults. I know why you went to San Francisco. I also know about the new vein up at the mine. What is this, blackmail? No. Am I going to force you to tell Carl the truth if I have to beat it out of you? Oh, is that so? Well, then by all means, start right in.
charge of this. You ain't taking charge of nothing. What? Boys, you got a new sherry. I'm beginning to like this climate. Yeah! Better bring her up to her room right away. I can't find anything wrong. The sound is a dollar. A silver dollar. A little rest and quiet won't do her any harm. I'll be close by if you need me. In case. Not that it's any of my business, but what was all the fighting about? You know Brett, the newspaper publisher down the street? Yeah. Well, talk to him. He'll tell you a lot. He did. He told me that Forsyth tried to steal a mine away from Miss Adams. That you gave her as a wedding present. Not so loud. I, I don't catch her. If I was in love with Miss Adams, I'd like her to know about it. Who said I was in love with her? Well, aren't you? Well, yes, if you don't object. Me object? <laughs> Shucks, no. I'm in favor of it. Thanks, Doctor. I'll call her later if she needs you. what he said about the poor side from the mine? Oh, we'll talk about that later. Mine or no mine, it wasn't worth risking your life for. Then why did you? I didn't. I just pretended to get hurt so I wouldn't shoot again. I wouldn't have you hurt for the mine or anything in the world because I... Is that a proposal? Jim. What? Darling, you have a big pump under your eye. I'll bet you a hundred to one I have two black eyes for our wedding. It's a bad bet, but I'll take it. 